Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the current connect series in today's episode we will cover the latest developments for the month of december so let's get started so the first topic is about the landmark move towards forming the criminal justice system of our country so the president of india has granted asset to three major bills first one is bharatiya nyaya sanhita 2023 which is replacing the indian penal code of 1860 One of the major provisions of this act is that the significant change in the sedition law, right? And under this act, the archaic offence of sedition law has been repealed. Now it has more clarity of grounds on which such charges can be imposed on someone, and they are inciting secession, armed rebellion, and subversive activities. Next one is Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita, uh, 2023, which is replacing the Code of Criminal Procedure or the CRPC of 1973. And lastly. we have bharatiya saksha adhiniyam 2023 which is uh, which is replacing the indian evidence act of 1872 one of its major major provision is the acceptance of electronic records under this act electronic or digital records carry the same weight as traditional paper documents and this includes information stored in your smartphones laptops email server logs which ensures that the modern forms of evidence are also duly recognized as evidence right So that is all about the recent changes in the legal system of India. Next up, the Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioner Act of 2023 has been passed, and this act is replacing the Election Commission Act of 1991. Now, the appointment process of CEC and ECs will be done through the Selection Committee, which will be chaired by the Prime Minister, compri- comprising of uh, the committee will also comprise of the leader of opposition or the leader of the largest opposition party in the Lok Sabha. and the union cabinet minister who will be nominated by the prime minister himself right and additionally a search committee is tasked with uh, shortlisting such candidates for the position of chief election commissioner and other election commissioner right and this search committee will be headed by minister of law and justice isn't it and now the act ensures the financial parity by stipulating that the chief election commissioner and the election commissioners receive will receive a salary that will be equivalent to the supreme court judge right and their tenure spans for 6 years from the date of assuming the office or until they attain the age of 65 years whichever comes first isn't it and cec can also uh, only be removed from his office in a manner at ground that are similar to that of a supreme court judge however the ec can be removed from the office upon the recommendation of the ec right so this difference that you need to keep in mind as the cec or any ec may resign at any time by writing to the president since question on ec have been asked many times or the election commission has been asked many times in your prelims this chapter is important for your exam right so now moving on the international organization for migration or the iom has launched a, a project called project prayas which stands for for promoting regular assisted migration for youth and skilled professionals So this collaborative initiative is undertaken in partnership with Ministry of External Affairs to address the challenges faced by the Indian diaspora worldwide, right? And the MEA, Niti Aayog, and the state governments will collaboratively, collaboratively to uh, uh, promote and uh, aware the diaspora worldwide and disseminate communication material on secure migration pathways that are present worldwide, right? And as you may know, India has. a vast diaspora with over 32 billion individuals spread across the globe and further it is world's largest recipient of uh, remittances and the top source from which the remittances come is usa which is followed by ua is it so th- that is uh, something that is important and now this uh, international organization for migration or the iom it was established in 1951 as a specialized body of the united nation and it is headquartered in geneva and it has been the at the forefront uh, for advocating advo- advocating the migrant rights and also the welfare of migrants worldwide right so that is all about project prayas next up we are discussing logistic ease across different states or the leads report 2023 that is uh, launched by ministry of commerce so the leads draws its inspiration from the logistics performance index or the lpi that are introduced by the world bank in 2018 However, unlike the LPI, which only only relies on the perception-based surveys, leads combine both perception as well as the ob- objectivity in its assessments. Right, and in this latest edition of the World Bank's LPI, right, the uh, Logistic Performance Index, India secures a rank of 38, right, from out of the 
country and this ranking serves as a bank benchmark which uh, shows the uh, efficacy of india's logistic ecosystem that is uh, measured through the AP lpi right and under the ob object uh, objective assessment of the leads it evaluates the support provided by the states and the union territories for policy and process improvement within the logistic ecosystem of that state or ut right which uh, and along with that it also assesses the stock of physical infrastructure uh, in the state or the union territory meanwhile so this is about the objective survey but at the same time there is also the perception assessment that takes into account that the leads report takes into account right so the perception assessment takes into account the stakeholders perspective on logistic infrastructure service and the oper operating and regulatory environment that are present in the states and the union territory and the report categorizes the states or union territories into three groups such as achievers past performers and the aspirants right and it is mostly based on the geography so that is all about the leads report next up we have a very important topic about the 28th conference of parties or the cop 28 of UNF Triple C, which was recently held in Dubai, at at the forefront of this initiative is the Global Green Credit Initiative, which is headed by India, and it is aimed to fostering the dialogue and collaboration for innovative environmental program. And most importantly, the COP28 saw the operationalization of the Loss and Damage Fund, which addresses the adverse impacts of climate change. And along with that, the inaugural of Global Stock Take under the Paris Agreement, also done. to uh, assess the progress that are made on un uh, under the paris agreement reach right and moreover 118 countries uh, came together and signed the global renewable and energy efficiency pledge while 50 major oil producing companies committed to the fossil fuel oil and gas decarbonization charter right and africa launched the green industrial Initi Initi industrialization initiative to accelerate the sustainable growth in uh, the african region and the G7 climate club which is led by germany and chile they aim uh, uh, they aim to uh, support the ambitious climate actions and also drive global efforts towards achieving net zero emissions right and india played a pivotal role in the cop 28 by co-launching the leadership group for industrial transition or the lead it 2.0 and co-hosting the green credits program event additionally india also highlighted its achievements in emission reduction and renewable energy deployment in the country A notable initiative also that are, that is led by India is the Global Global River Cities Alliance or the GRCA, which aims to connect the river cities worldwide for sustainable development. So, India-specific initiatives are important for from the point of view of our exam, right? Next up, Ministry of Earth Science has launched the country's first ever winter scientific expedition to the Arctic under the Polar Science and Cryosphere Research or the PACER scheme. which is headed by the National Center for Polar and Ocean Research or the NCPOR which is situated in Goa India has been engaged in scientific exploration of earth's poles you know right and since 2008 the nation has maintained the Himalayan research base in the arctic which is situated in Svalbard in Norway interesting thing is Himalayan has been primarily operational during the summer months from uh, April to October however the winter expedition this year from november to march presents a unique opportunity for the researchers to conduct scientific observation during the polar night and assessing the impact of uh, the polar night on the climate uh, impact on the climate ecology and atmospheric dynamics as well right so that is all about the india's first driver arctic expedition in the winter next in the field of artificial intelligence google's latest gemini and ola's kritrim are revolutionizing the landscape of ai powered solutions right So the Google's Gemini project marks a significant leap towards at, uh, in the field of uh, AI technology, which aims to emulate human-like behavior. Right? With phased, uh, it will be rolled out in phases. Uh, versions like Nano and Pro will be coming into Google's AI-powered chatbot part, and also Pixel 8 Pro smartphones that are launched by Google. And you just can expect remarkable advancement in problem-solving capacity of this uh, uh, the search engine, and as well as the uh, uh the ai model that is the bar right and interesting thing is gemini's ability in problem solving particularly tokens like math and physics holds important uh development for enhancing the user experience as well as streaming of the complex tasks right meanwhile ola's kutri emerges as a game changer in the realm of language models 
tailored specifically for Indian languages. So it has uh, the ability to understand 22 Indian languages and also it can generate content in about 10 languages as of now, right? So Kruthrim opens new avenues in AI for linguistic diversity as well as accessibility in Indian content, right? And for your knowledge, both of these, the Gemini as well as the uh, uh, Kruthrim are, uh, are the large language model or the LLM, right? Which represent a culmination of cutting edge technology inspired by the human brain. So there are neural networks in human brain like that. These neural networks are capable of recognizing, summarizing, translating, and also generating content in different formats, right? So that is all about the Gemini and Kutrim. Next up, United States has approved the first ever CRISPR-based gene therapies to combat the sickle cell disease, right? So let's understand the intricacies of these treatments and the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. So CASGV and Livgenia are the two cell-based gene therapies which have received the approval for treating sickle cell disease. The CASGV uh, therapy is based on CRISPR-Cas9 technology which is a, actually a gene editing tool that allows precise modification of gene function and also it operates as a molecular content based mechanism on DNA straps. Right? So it was developed by Emmanuel Charpenter and Jennifer Todna for which they, were, they, they have been awarded with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in the year 2020. Now, CRISPR-Cas9 identifies specific genetic codes which require modification and employs the Cas9 protein as the molecular scissor to excise, excise targeted and segmented segmentation of the DNA. Right? So, it, it targets a specific part of the DNA through this Cas9 uh, protein. And then the broken strands undergo self-repair which enable, enable the removal of defective DNA and restoration of healthy genetic sequences. And the application of this CRISPR technology extends from uh, editing genes in human embryos to enhancing crop resilience and also developing innovative cancer therapies as well. Right? So that is about the first ever CRISPR-based gene therapy. Next up, the Union Minister for uh, MSME has launched three important innovative sub-schemes under the Raising and Accelerating MSME Productivity or the RAM program. So the first scheme or the sub scheme is called the MSME Green Investment and Financing for Transformation Scheme or the MSME Gift Scheme. This aims to facilitate the adoption of green technology by the MSMEs and through interest, you know, it will be done through interest subvention and credit guarantee support. With, uh, this will this will pave the way for the environmental sustainable practices within the MSME industry, right? And next we have the MSME Scheme for Promotion and uh, Investment in Circular Economy or the MSME spice scheme so uh, this is aimed at promoting the circular economy projects among the msme it will be providing credit subsidies and this scheme will also catalyze the projects which are aimed aiming at achieving net zero status by 2070 which also aligns with the net zero pledge by india right so finally the ms uh, msme uh, scheme on uh, online dispute resolution for delayed payments which introduces a novel approach to address uh, the delayed payments which are faced by uh, the MSME. So this is actually a large problem that is the delay in the payments. So by leveraging modern IT tools and artificial intelligence technology, this scheme offers legal support to expedite the resolution process. And together these sub schemes under the RAM program signify a holistic approach towards enhancing the competitiveness as well as the resilience of MSMEs in India. Right? So that is about the RAM scheme. Now, India has achieved a significant milestone during the Air Force exercise uh, Astra Sakti 2023. Utilizing the Akash weapon system, India became the first country to engage over aerial targets simultaneously at the range of 25 kilometers using a single firing unit. Right? So, now the Akash uh, weapon system is a short range surface to air missile system which safeguards vulnerable areas and critical points from being aerially attacked. Right? And it is designed and developed indigenously by TRDO. And the Akash weapon system has a built in electronic counter counter features of the ECCM feature, which uh, enables it, uh, it to be uh, operated uh, in an effective manner. And also, it also uh, uh, can counter through this technology, it can also counter the sophisticated threats. Right. And next up, the first edition of Hello India Para Games or the KIPG was held in December 2023 in Delhi which showcased the extraordinary talent and uh, resilience of the our para-athletes from across the nation, right? 
at this edition included seven sports uh, discipline including archery and at, uh, athletics badminton table tennis powerlifting football uh, shooting etc at kujwala which which is actually a sparrow was used as its mascot haryana was just the champion of kpg 2023 at the runner up was uttar pradesh the khelo india paragram paragram it actually marked the latest addition to the government's uh, uh, khelo india initiative right which is a central sector scheme aiming at promoting the uh, sports excellence and fostering a culture of sports in our country and this initiative also encompasses the khelo india youth games khelo india university games and khelo india winter right next up in the recognition of the outstanding contribution to the peace disarmament and development the prestigious indira gandhi prize for a peace for 2023 has been jointly awarded to daniel peron boy and ali abu awad right so their remarkable efforts have fostered dialogue and reconciliation between youth and people of israel as well as the arab people which paved the way for non violent resolution while the israel and palestine conflict was going on right and this uh, peace prize that that is the indira gandhi peace prize is conferred annually since 1986 by the indira gandhi memorial trust so this is not a national uh, 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 prize or the peace prize is not nationally given to someone it is given by a independent body which is indira gandhi memorial trust so that is something that you need to understand so next up the kempegowda international airport in bangalore was honored at unesco's 2023 prix bharsai and it earned the recognition as one of the world's most beautiful airports and since the inception of this unesco prix bharsai in 2015 uh, it has celebrated the finest contemporary architectural achievements worldwide and it is it not only recognizes the architectural excellence but also it underscores the principle of intelligent sustainability right and by emphasizing the project's ecological social and cultural impacts are so that brings us to the end of the episode of current connect we hope this episode has provided you with valuable insights and knowledge about some social matters last 6 months current affairs have been compiled into a document and linked in the description box below hope it will help you in your last round of revision thank you for joining us today and until next time stay curious and keep exploring the world around